Okay. All right, we'll call the regular council meeting of order 733. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance.
uh, report of chronic wasting disease in a deer that was found in Nyoni County this past deer season. It was uh, <coughs> just north of Bellamy uh, in Orleans Township. So uh, what my bill would do would be prohibit live deer from being transported or imported into the state of Michigan. It's currently illegal to bring in uh, a harvested deer. You have to process it first before you bring it into Michigan. Um, there's a lot that we don't know about chronic wasting disease, but there's a few things we do know. It passes deer to deer, so it can pass through saliva and, and uh, feces. Um, it's 100% fatal, 100% of the time. And uh, one thing that's really interesting about it is if a deer dies, and it dies in, in, a, in a certain area, the grass that actually grows up in the area where the deer decomposed at, they've actually found the, the protein that's that causes CWD in the grass. So uh, it's very lethal, it spreads like wildfire, and if we don't contain it, it will spread. Because if we look at what's happening in other states, it's only gonna get worse. So um, there's three bills in that package. I call it a starting point. Um, I think it's something that it's gonna devastate um, the local economy when it comes to, to deer hunting if we don't address it now. So with that being said, those are a few things I've been working on. Appreciate your time. Um, I also wanted to introduce State Representative Chris Appendoulis. He's running to, for State Senate in uh, Senator Hillenbrand's seat, who's term limited out. Uh, I'm supporting Chris for State Senate. I know for a fact he would do a great job. Uh, there's a lot of reasons I want to support Chris. Um, he, he does some things that I like. He's data-driven. He has a strong financial mind. He's a CPA, um, and he's a hard worker. Those are some things that I really appreciate. So I'll tell you all the, all the qualities he has that makes him a good state rep. The one I think he's the best at is he's a, he's a good listener. And I think that's really what you need from an elected official, uh, is someone who can listen. They might not always tell you what you want to hear, but they at least give you an honest opinion, and that's what you'll get from Chris. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I want to thank Representative Albert for that, and members of the uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the Commission. Uh, Chris Affendoulis, 240 Edge Hill, uh, Grand Rapids Township. Uh, as uh, Representative Albert said, I'm the state representative of the 73rd District, which is uh, Grand Rapids Township, East Grand Rapids, Plainfield, Cannon, Cortland, Oakville, Nelson Spencer uh, Townships to the northeast part of the county. Uh, I am in my second term. As, uh, as he mentioned, Senator Hildenbrand is term limited. I'm proud to have his endorsement as well. And uh, I, I'm a CPA by trade. Uh, I've spent uh, four years in public accounting. Uh, I audited government agencies, cities, uh, and then I spent 24 years in private industry. But me meanwhile, I was uh, able to serve in local government, as you have, uh, uh, 10 years with the Grand Rapids Township Board, uh, three years as trustee, and then seven years as the treasurer. I think we all get pigeonholed a little bit when you're a CPA. They, they get you into these uh, positions, but I was happy to do that. And then when the opportunity uh, uh, presented itself, I ran for the state house. Uh, left my job in private industry after 24 years as a chief financial officer and a lot of people said uh, why are you doing that and i said well i've always wanted to, always wanted to serve uh, at the state level so uh, this seat is open i just come today to introduce myself appreciate your consideration uh, and uh, I, I will see you uh, i will see a lot of you uh, i was out visiting uh, many residents tonight and uh, knocking on some doors here in the city of lowell and i will be back i'll be back off and so uh, I don't want need to bother you with any questions, but I've left my contact information, so if you have anything, please uh, please do. And I know Dick went from, uh, we've known each other for a long time. As a matter of fact, his uh, his daughter babysat my uh, my daughters uh, back about, well, about a little over, a little under 20 years ago, and was their teacher as well. So uh, so thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you. you all. Anybody else? No? All right, old business is clear. New business, five item A, Hearthstone Design Studio, the showboat interior design.
and engineering and design is underway on the new structure. Engineers working on the structure have requested additional information regarding interior fit and finishes and product specifications. Examples of product fit and finish decisions include items such as window and door selection and rough openings, trim material and finish, lighting, heating and cooling equipment and elevator specifications. With numerous technical questions regarding interior fit and finish, the city requested the professional services of Hearthstone Design Studio of Grand Rapids to serve as the interior designer of the showboat replacement project. Owner, Ms. Sharon, hope I get this right, Parna Fiello. Very good. Um, I, I have Italian, so that, that kind of helps. <laughs> we'll work uh, directly with the city's project manager. Showboat work group and engineers to develop a plan for the finished components of the new structure. Ms. Perna Fiello has requested a retainer in the amount of $20,000 for her services. Um, funds for the interior designs professional services are available in the Showboat Project Fund. Uh, that will be grant covered. Um, just, a, just a quick uh, change will be uh, caught. This, uh, the agreement will be $125 an hour for her services, not to exceed $20,000. Um, I'm recommending the uh, City Council accept the uh, Hearthstone Design Studio proposal uh, for interior student, uh, for interior design student services for the Lowell Showboat Replacement Project for a cost, for cost not to exceed $20,000 and authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to execute the contract dated April 30, 2018. The whole contract is coming from the Hill Grant money and the grant? This will be covered out of the grant, out correct. Correct. Discussion on that, anybody? Mike stole my iPad, so I'll look for a motion on that. Thanks. Can I make that motion? I'll support. All right, any other discussion? Sue? Mayor DeVore? Yes. Councilmember Salcedo? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. And yes. Councilmember Canfield? Yes. Alright, carries. Item B, City Hall Carpet Replacement on the second floor, much needed. In March 2018, the Department of Public Works issued a request for proposals to interested vendors to replace carpeting at City Hall and Low Lane Power. The City Hall portion of the RFP requested vendors to bid replacement of the existing broad loom carpeting on the second floor of City Hall. The carpeting is approximately 15 years old and has separated from the backing, creating potential trip hazards in some public spaces. Approximately 300,000 feet square feet of carpet are proposed to be replaced as well as the wall based trim. The carpeting will be replaced with a 24 inch by 24 inch carpet tile product that is easier to remove and replace when a section becomes stained or damaged. The low bid product is, is manufactured by Mannington Carpet SEO product line. The vendors will be required to supply a quantity of back stock material for future maintenance needs. The city clerk has a sample of the selected product. Do you have it here? Yeah. Removal and installation will be coordinated with the vendor to minimize disruptions to city operations and meeting. Uh, we, received, we received two quotes, or quotes from two different firms, Beecham Flooring and Forever Flooring. Um, the selected, the recommended uh, carpet um, is at $15,622. And this was a budgeted item in the, uh, in the um, general fund for this year for this project. I'm recommending the Lowell City Council accept a little bit from Beach and Flooring in the amount of $15,622 to replace carpeting and wall-based trim on the second floor of City Hall. Anything better? Anything more better? When do we look at uh, starting in completion for the project? What's the lead time on the carpet? Uh, um, we were hoping that you'd make this decision three weeks ago, but I'm going to light power, it depends on the Mannington's production date, whether they have stock or not. And production, again, is prob could be as long as three to four weeks out. Um, we're probably looking at sometime in June. Thank you. Once you have it, how long? A weekend. Put it down a weekend. We're going to do it, we're going to do it nights and, and basically the week, weekend coordinating because I know you, you have uh, well we'd actually probably as soon as um, rotary was done on a on a Wednesday we'd probably get in here and start doing it so that Monday's council meeting that would be all done and 
have minimal, you know, Interrupt. interruption. And again, the light power, we're doing that, and that's going to be done nights and weekends. This being upstairs, uh, basically working around whatever um, organizational meetings. It's a little bit different than your offices. So. I recommend that the City Council accept the low bid from Beach and Flooring in the amount of $15,622 to replace carpeting and wall base trim on the second floor of City Hall. And I'll support. Any other questions? Sue? Councilmember Salisbury? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Canfield? Yes. And Mayor DeVore? Yes. Uh, item C to set a public hearing date for the budget, Michael. Um, yes, public hearing date will be set um, Monday, May 21st um, at 7 p.m. to uh, consider the uh, fiscal year 19 budget. Okay. I'd recommend that the local city council sets the public hearing on May 21st, 2018 at 7 p.m. to review the fiscal year budget. I'll support. Okay. Questions for Mike? Sue? Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Canfield? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Councilmember Salisbury? Yes. Letter D, Resolution 1318 is Section 19 reimbursement, Michael, again. Uh, the city will be eligible for Section 19 funding from the state of Michigan pertaining to the February flood event. This means additional costs taken on by the city to address the flood will be eligible for reimbursement. For example, over time, additional police staffing and equipment we rented strictly for the flood event will be eligible for reimbursement. The city has calculated that we will be eligible for $9,980.09. In order for the city to be eligible, we must pass the attached resolution, which is 1318, um, the, uh, and submit this to the state of Michigan regarding funding. This res resolution also requires the city to designate a point of contact that will be responsible for providing information and communicating with the state on this matter. Our contact will be Sue, Sue Olin, our city treasurer. I'm recommending the Lowell City Council to approve resolution 1318 for the city of Lowell to be eligible for section 19 reimbursement. Mike, does that go back into the general fund or does it go into the departments that, that were charged fees for that? Where does that 9,000 go back into? Um, we'll, we'll allocate it. We have a breakdown based on what fund everything came out of. So it'll be allocated back to the fund that it was expended okay, from. I would say the majority of this is, I believe, I can have an attachment. I believe the majority of this came from uh, from uh, general, uh, with the exception of maybe some of the uh, equipment. equipment. Okay. Most of it was general fund expense. Please staff, please staff me, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What percentage is that of what we actually spent? Do you have any idea on that? We calculated about. If you included my time and the salary time involved in this, the number of hours of event, we initially calculated about $19,000, but the, the issue was we couldn't use any straight time, right. even though everyone, every employee during that event was, was dealing with this issue. That was, that was, that was going to be paid, those, those were going to be paid by the city no matter what. Um, I worked like 64 hours during that flood, just in those five days. And I know Steve worked nearly as much, but we don't get overtime, we just get straight time. And um, so I know um, a lot of the costs, and if there was any regular equipment that we use, any of our own equipment, we don't get reimbursed for that. So like our equipment fund, when we're billing rentals normally to our equipment fund, that those weren't reimbursable, but we, we we made we we had it set up so all of our costs, rentals, everything went in to a certain account so we could tabulate it. But at the end of the day, this is what we were eligible for. Still, if you figure 19, the state's going to give us back almost 10. Correct. Mm -hmm. Getting 50 percent back from the state on anything, I think, is a pretty good score. I would say so. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll recommend the little city council approve resolution 1318 to be eligible for section 19 reimbursement. I'll support. Any other discussion? <laughs> Mr. Albert, comments? Okay, Sue. Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Canfield? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 
Councilmember Salzlito? Yes. And Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Very good. Item E, Hudson Street Utility Work, Michael. In preparation for the Kent County Road Commission's Hudson Street resurfacing project from the Grand River Bridge to the North City limits, which is tentatively planned for June 2018, the Department of Public Works requested quotes from qualified contractors to replace water valve box and sanitary sewer castings in the Hudson right of way, Hudson Street right of way. Approximately 20 water valve boxes and 20 sanitary ca sewer castings are proposed to be replaced within the project limits in advance of the, res the resurfacing work. The replacement is necessary because valve box and sanitary sewer castings become damaged, settle over time, or become unlevel, impact stride, street ride quality. With relatively short notice to get the project implemented, the DPW opted to contract three independent contractors to obtain <coughs> quotes for the proposed utility work rather than bid the project out. Those were Camming and Road of Oats out of Grand Rapids for $55,200, Lease Trenching and Byron Center, they turned the work down. Groundhog excavating in wool. Uh, we did not receive a response. Um, funds for the work are available in the, in the following account. We will be amending the budget that's in front of you next week to address this. Um, the uh, wastewater fund, uh, $17,200 out of the capital outlay line item, in the collection capital outlay item, and then um, $38,000 from the water fund distribution capital outlay outline, outlay line item. I recommend the city accept Kenning up and Rudabo's quote of $55,200 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the contract on behalf of the city. Michael, are they going to start on the south side then first and then when that's done, jump to the north? Um, actually, that's, that's not going to be the case. Um, the intent is, is if this is approved tonight, they, they would actually go north and work south on this end of the project. We have not gotten definition from the county as to when when they actually do begin paving construction on um, Hudson Street on June 11th. We haven't gotten that full schedule, we just know the time period that's going to take. But we anticipate if this is approved, that I believe next this Wednesday they can actually begin starting north-south north traffic um, north of Maine on Hudson. They'll be, they'll just be, they'll be lane changes, but they'll be, they'll be lane usage. Would this be enough time if when we get to the south for the railroad tracks, if we did that work, would we be reimbursed for it if we no. probably wouldn't have that in time? No. Um, one of the reasons why we're, we've, I've already, since, since the conversation I've had with Representative Alberts, um, I have contacted the Road Commission about possibly partnering and, and, and doing this. It's the county's road, obviously. And um, the issue, the issue, the reason we didn't we didn't do anything with the railroads because we've been working we've been working probably since September to try and get this project worked on and it wasn't until March when the county would knew how much funding they would have available to do streets addressing if we were trying to address the issue with the railroad we would not get this project completed this year um, and railroads don't move like trains like the trains, correct. The railroad companies, there's there's certain protocols you have to deal with with them, and so they're really not they're really not they're really not much. Of, yeah, they're they're they actually they actually trump road. They actually have when if you look at the, the the procedure of how things work, railroads have precedence over even a state state or a uh, local uh, highway system. So, but we are trying to get that matter resolved. So, so Mike, look at is this basically just labor since we're providing the covers by the city of Low Water Department, ballot boxes, DS frames, and covers provided by the city of Low and their bid notes? Yes, we already had. Yes, we already. From my understanding, we already had these on order. Okay. So these sewer castings, they replace the piece that the manhole drops into that and That's just raise it up to the elevation that it needs? My understanding. And then on the water boxes, they just unscrew the top piece and screw a new one down. It's my understanding. Just uh, 1200 bucks a piece for labor seems a little steep. It would have been nice if we could have got more bids on it, but it is, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and unfortunately, Rich could probably explain this better than I could. Unfortunately, he's not. Yeah. He's well, not the good thing with them is we know we're going to get quality work out of them, and, and you know that's important. Right. They're already they're already going to be responsible for for doing the work um, currently in Broadway in that area anyway. So that does help. Well, I'll make a motion for KNR quote of 55200 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the contract on behalf of the city council. I'll support. Anything else you like? Sue? Councilmember Canfield? Yes. Mayor DeBoer? Yes. Councilmember Salisbury? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Okay. Uh, last one, resolution 1418, the village of Caledonia is going to join the Grand Valley Metro Council. Mm -hmm. As your representative for the Grand Valley Metro Council, I am informing you of a request from the Village of Caledonia gaining membership to the organization. As part of the GVMC bylaws, membership by a municipality is made by a council resolution for each representative community. If the majority of, of the representative communities in GVMC approve of it, then you can gain entry um, into the Metropolitan Council. Um, I'm recommending that the City of Lowell approve Resolution 1418 granting the Village of Caledonia membership into the Grand Valley Metro Council. Have they not been in it before? They have not. No. All right. Yeah, once you're in, you normally don't leave. I mean, the reason being is, is if you're trying to get federal, the biggest reason is the federal aid eligibility for funding for roads. Um, if you have a federal aid eligible road, you have to get funding from the MPO, so you have to be a member of the MPO to be eligible for the funding. So we're one of many that are looking at recommending them. Correct. I believe there's 114 participating jurisdictions in Grand Valley Metro Council. I believe that's the number. Okay. I'd make a motion that the City of Lowell approve Resolution 1418 granting the Village of Caledonia membership into the Grand Valley Metropolitan Council. I'll support. All right. Uh, Sue? Mayor DeVore? Yeah. Councilmember Salzito? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Canfield? Yes. All right. Uh, board and commission reports, Mr. Canfield. Uh, no meeting since our last. All right. Mr. Chambers? Uh, my all this week. Mr. Salzito? I have none. Jeffrey? And I don't have anything. All right. I don't either. I have the DDA was canceled. Fire board next Monday, Arbor board next Monday, and a vision meeting next Tuesday. So. I'll have some good reports from everybody on the 21st. Uh, Michael, makes it your turn. Sure. Um, kind of already updated this. Um, Hudson Construction, Mill and Overlay will begin on June 11th. Um, they anticipate a five-day construction period. Two of those days, Jackson, I'm sorry, Jackson will be the go-around route as um, Hudson will be closed between Grand River and uh, Main Street. We do not have the schedule yet from the county as to whether they're going to close Grand or Hudson first first phase or the second phase. They haven't they haven't informed us of that yet. Um, and then they'll need three days to uh, address the area north of Main Street to the city limits. That part of that part of the city there will be. Um, there will be, it will be open to traffic throughout the entire project. Uh, there will be, um, this week, as I mentioned briefly, they will be um, doing the castings and valve box. They'll start that work um, in the area um, north of Maine, and uh, they will, um, they will have it, uh, they'll, they won't have to shut down traffic during that as well. Uh, one good one good news with the uh, with the bids we had agreed to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be paid over two years back to Kent County for the cost of the mill overlay bids came in about fifty thousand dollars less than what the, the engineer uh, estimate was and so that'll be twenty five thousand dollars less that we would have to re reimburse the county for that project uh, so that that's a good thing. Um, just a reminder that Dan Burden will be here on, the, on Tuesday the 15th. I anticipate 9 a.m. Once I have more clarification, I will let you know. Um, it'll, be an, it'll be an interesting day. Um, you, he, is, he is very knowledgeable about things you need to do to improve walkability 
and things you need to do to establish more placemaking opportunities in your downtown. I, it'll be a very enjoyable day. You'll actually, I, I think you'll learn a lot when he's here, and I'm looking forward to him coming um, to town. He's going rain or shine? Yes, it's rain or shine. He's here regardless. Okay. Yeah, he's coming from Port Townsend, Washington. He'll be here. <laughs> um, wanted to um, update the council on something that the Grand Valley Metro Council is, is looking at. Um, as this technology emerges with, um, with our wireless technology, we, um, in the last couple of years we've had issues uh, with small cells. Um, basically, they're, they're, they're basically the, uh, the, where you get the wireless from on your phone. Um, rather than having your regular cell phone towers, um, these small cell um, options are coming up. And they're and they're 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 showing up in many in many different communities throughout Michigan throughout the United States. Um, this has been an issue that before I arrived, um, the Grand Valley Metro Council started to look at because the issue was was trying to have some type of um, a unified agreement between the uh, telecommunication industries and the municipalities that are involved in it. Communities look at these different ways. A lot of them look at it as. Uh, Re um, revenue generating options in some in some aspects. Others, they don't really view it as that. Um, certain communities obviously are against them. Certain communities don't have no issue with them. And the issue, the issue, the issue with really most of the managers in West Michigan is that we don't have a problem with them. We actually we encourage this type of technology. Um, the issue is is ensuring that the local community has some control as to what goes in the right of way. Uh, so the Grand Valley Metro Council, a couple of years, about beginning of 2017, they actually sat down with all the different telecommunication is, indus, um, industries and developed a, basically an agreed upon set of documents and, and, and ordinances for communities to approve that everyone can, can agree with. And, it, and it's been working um, for the for the most part. Now there's bills in the in the in the in the Senate, and I believe they're in the House right now, it's Senate Bill 636. Uh, the, the the issue with the bill is that with the new with the new regulation, there's concerns regarding local control because basically if it comes into place, they can they can there's a there's a minimal fee that the that the community that the community has to pay. Well that, that, that they would pay the community to use the right of way, and, and basically there's there's no control by the municipality as to where these go. They can go anywhere in the right of way, basically from what we're being told with the uh, with the with the proposed legislation. Um, I know they have um, revised the Senate bill somewhat to address some of those concerns. However, to those involved with the Grand Valley Metro Council who are involved in this they're not, it's not satisfactory enough at this point. And um, I know these bills are still working on in the, in the, in the legislature. I'm hoping they take into account the fact that Grand Valley Metro Council's had a solid policy on this, then maybe they would consider that. I'm hoping I would encourage, I would encourage that. Um, but what it forces us to do here in, in Lowell um, is I've asked the city attorney to start looking into this matter for us about a possible set of ordinances. Now, the issue really on our end is is it's not it's not we're not looking at as a as a as a money generating option. I don't think we'll get much money for it. Um, and uh, and I really and I have no issues with the technology. I think technology is good. And I think we need these things. The concern is going to be where they go, um, and that would be something that I would hope the. The, the, the local jurisdictions would be able to have some say on, uh, and um, that is something that we're working on. But we're probably going to be bringing you an ordinance to consider at some point whether or not the, the big issue. The big issue is is with these with this legislation. If the ordinance, if the if the legislation passes, if you have an ordinance and an agreement with a telecommunication company and it's installed before the, the legislation passes. Then your agreement is is good. Is good. Um, 
and they have to honor your agreement. Um, currently, we don't have those issues. We don't have any agreements currently with anyone, and, and we haven't even been approached on it. But I'm still going to probably bring it to council just more on the principle of the local control matter. So I anticipate you seeing something here in the next couple next couple meetings on this. Um, so we have that issue. Also, do you mind if I chime in sure. about that? Um, <laughs> At the Michigan Municipal Electric Association, it's the state organization that represents all 40 electric municipals, and at the national level, the American Public Power Association, which represents 2,000 municipal electric utilities. The concern is that these small cell devices, which allow for 5G technology, um, the FCC might institute a law that would force municipals to locate these devices on their poles and uh, at the national and state level we're advocating against that and even right here in Lowell if for example in the downtown district we had these cells on certain poles on Broadway for example and we wanted to go underground on that street but if these devices are here and the FCC said oh you have to have these devices on these poles we might not even be able to underground the service so I agree with Mike, and we're doing things um, on the electric side of the industry too at the state and national level on this. Steve, could you still do underground, but would have to leave that single pull up for that one transmitter? Well, the problem is these transmitters potentially could be located on every single pole. Gotcha. So it just aesthetically would defeat the purpose. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Um, also, um, I was informed by Grand Valley Metro Council that um, eventually, very shortly, we're going to be getting requests for calls for project for the transportation improvement plan for fiscal years 21 through 23. That's basically the, the, the road bill, um, road funding that we get through the federal government that goes to MDOT. Um, we only have, to my knowledge, we only have two city owned streets that are federally eligible. Uh, those are uh, Foreman and uh, Bowes. And um, I made a request to Grand Valley Metro Council. I'm sure this is a stretch to see if we can get more of our local streets added as federally eligible roads. I'm not sure that's going to be possible, but I figured I'd try. So um, I'll let you know uh, where, we, where we stand with that. Um, also on Friday, I attended a uh, a luncheon where Governor, Governor Snyder was in attendance uh, as they have just released the uh, asset management pilot project that I was working on with many other different jurisdictions. Um, it's, it's a rather lengthy, it's a rather lengthy uh, um, report and basically what the intent is is to try and develop an asset management plan that everyone can address uniformly at the state level. Hopefully this pilot project can lead more towards a state asset management plan. Hopefully this also would lead to funding by the state some way, some form, to address our infrastructure. Um, I'd be happy to share a copy of the report with, with, with anyone on the council if they so wish, or also to the public. Um, and uh, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. One question about major streets. Sure. Um, parking isn't allowed on major streets, correct? That is an issue, yes. So we lose all our... Street parking street, right. Right. That would be that. That may be correct, and I'd have to look. I'd have to look at that. I, I'm not, and I'm not 100 percent sure, um, because my experience is I've received federal aid funding for projects where we were allowed to have parking on street. It was in a downtown district, but I would have. I would have to look into that. I think that's a factor we want to look into Absolutely. before we pull the trigger. Sure, out. we need a road specs, but. That might upset some people too. Sure. I think there was some talk about that at the time on Jefferson, and we'd have to give up some parking rights. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, item eight is appointments. No applications, correct? Yeah. Okay. I did talk to Jeff Dickerman. He's willing to continue in his capacity on the Light and Power Board. And then Kelly Bremeyer, we can't swear until next meeting, correct? Right. 14, after the 14th, I mean. Um, so I still haven't spoke to Nancy Wood or 
Bruce Parker, but everything else is a resignation. So we need applications for those if you want to be involved. Uh, council comments, Jeffrey? I don't have anything. I just hope everybody has a great week. Thank you, Jim. I, I do want to confirm that the other board members will be, our council members will be walking in the Memorial Day Parade, and it's supposed to be my first year, so what time does that all begin, and where do you meet, and what do uh, you do? We met at the King Building last year, but right. I don't remember what time. I believe the parade started at 10 o'clock. Yeah, we were there about 9.30. Greg, okay. Mike, and I walked. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Thanks. Plan on doing that again. Yep. Thank you. Greg. Nothing. Mr. Chambers. I am good, sir. All right. I am good as well. Uh, now I'll look for a motion for us to go into closed session to discuss the labor negotiations. I'll make a motion that we go into closed session at 8 12. Support. All right. Sue. Councilmember Salzio. Yes. Councilmember Phillips. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Council Member Canfield? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. All right, we'll go into closed session and we'll